Muchísimas gracias, mi Philip. Pista del rey. Ay, pero qué loca, yo la mato, mira. Going back to Emmanuel, I feel like she did an amazing job. I have nothing bad to say or criticize. Now, the major, major, major problem that I have with this is the translation. Hello everyone, welcome once again to my channel. It's your boy Luis Portellis and for today's video we have a very special reaction because we are going to be talking about Emmanuel Vera's full performance during Reina Hispanoamericana 2021. And before we get into any aspects of the video, I just want to say a huge congratulations to Emmanuel for representing the Philippines so so well. This girl did such an amazing job. Honestly, I am just in awe of how she presented herself, everything that she did. I mean, to say that I'm proud, it's really an understatement. For those of you who did not follow this pageant so closely, you should know that Emmanuel went to Bolivia, I would say two weeks ago, in order to prepare for the pageant, to participate in the activities, and ultimately to compete during Reina Hispanoamericana 2021. Uh, before she left, I actually had the pleasure to have her on my channel as a guest for an interview, which was also kind of a send-off interview. And I'm really glad that I had that opportunity because it allowed me to see her more on a personal level, know her expectations, and also build my own expectations of what she will deliver ultimately during the pageant. But now that we have the official results of the pageant and we know that she ended up as third runner-up, I would like to comment on her full performance, the entire journey. There's a lot of things that I would like to point out very positive, but there's also a few negative things that I'd like to talk about not necessarily about Emmanuel herself, but things that I believe ultimately did hurt her during her performance. So that's gonna be a little bit of a rant, but I hope that you guys understand. And also let me know if you see where I'm coming from with these comments. So out of this video, the only thing that I hope is that you enjoy it. If you do, don't forget to leave a like on the video so that it gets recommended to more people. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one almost every single day. And last but not least, let me know in the comment section if you agree with you know all of my point of views, my comments, feedbacks, good or negative. I mean, let's have a healthy conversation around those. So now with that, my friends, let's get into today's video. I really, really hope that you enjoy it. Alright everyone, so for today's video we are going to be using a compilation video that was put online just a few hours ago by Clive Blog Live. So thank you so much for putting together this, you know, mashup that makes it easier for the fans and the vloggers. And um, as I mentioned, as we go, I'll just give you my comments, my thoughts about the performance and the things that I thought were well done or not so much. So let's start watching and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, that was fast. Wait, I was not ready. I thought it was gonna be a little longer than that. But let's talk about her national costume. I mean, obviously, I feel like most pageant fans have seen this costume already because this is the same outfit that uh, Maureen Rabobitz wore during her Miss Universe Philippines national costume competition. Now, a lot of people were complaining that, well, it's something that we already saw, it's been done. However, I feel like the costume itself, it's so beautiful and there is such a beautiful message behind it, you know? It's a tribute to fishermen from the Philippines, so I just think that because of the message behind the costume, but also because of how elaborate it is, I was not mad at all about the fact that Emmanuel wore it second. Now, what I would like to say is that I wish that the costumes were showcased a little bit more individually rather than having everyone at the same time on stage giving their introductions. But to be fair, they did have a separate activity where each one of the candidates got to, you know, present the costumes. It's just something that we did not see during the finale. That's just kind of a little picky thing on my end, but you know, uh, overall, I was very pleased with the national costume. I thought it was beautiful, as expected. Just like Maureen, I feel like Emmanuel was able to deliver something, you know, on the spot. She did justice to this costume. <laughs> The twirl. <laughs> Get the twirl, girl. Filipina. Beautiful. Okay, let's talk about her walk during uh, the swimsuit presentation. I personally loved it. I have nothing bad to say about this. And I remember during my interview with Emmanuel, when I asked her to mention one of the things that she was still working on, she did mention her walk. If she was working on it at the time, then girl, you did your homework because this was 
killer. I love the double twirl. I just feel like it's so original and something that we don't see very often. I know that she's not the first one doing it. However, it's very refreshing when you see it. And when you see it, well done. You know, because not everyone can pull it off. What I also really, really love is that she is so coordinated with the way that she walks and she presents herself on stage. She does respect the technicalities, but at the same time, it still feels like she's having fun, like she's enjoying the moment. And you know, something that is very typical of Latinos and Latinas in general is that we are very playful. We like to tease, we like to play. And if Emmanuel came on stage just like walking, super, you know, like technical and no emotion, it wouldn't go well with the Latinos. So the fact that she was enjoying herself so much, doing like double twirl, showing her body, her curves, playful with the music as well, I feel like it just really, really helped her earn some points within this particular competition. So I loved every second of it. Now let's keep watching because she's going to present her evening gown and I'll give you some of my thoughts about that as well. Yes. <laughs> oh, I love that. Okay, all right. Okay, I need to watch that little, you know, turning on the spot that she did. She's gonna turn. Look, look, look. On the spot. Hey. I feel like Emmanuel really knows how to balance herself in this type of challenges. As I was telling you, for the swimsuit, she was just like so, so playful and living in the moment. But now for the evening gown, I feel like she was going for more of an elegant walk, you know, very calm, very regal. But she didn't compromise the fun of it. When you look at her face, she's not smiling in the sense that you cannot see her teeth, but you still can feel the playfulness and the emotion that's going on in there. And once again, it's not because you are being classic or you are presenting yourself in a way that it's very you know refined that you cannot have fun hence the little turning around on the spot something unique right this is what makes the performance so exciting to watch i have to say as well that i did love the gown because not only it's beautiful itself but i feel like it's also a little not you know like a little reference to her miss world philippines uh gown that she wore as well so i like seeing those references and paying tribute to herself and the designers that work with her nothing but love and appreciation for this particular part of the competition so let's keep watching finalist now who is here? Miss Filipina <gasps> Emmanuel Vera. <laughs> we already knew. <laughs> Come on, girl. Stunning. Something that I love about Vera is that she knows how to handle her emotions. Like normally when, when the finalists are announced, most beauty queens just go like, oh my God, what is this? And some of them like go on the floor, they start crying, they start yelling. Emmanuel is so like calm and put together. She just walks to the front like, thank you, thank you, thank you. Deep down she knew she had this in the bag. Mm. I feel like what I enjoy the most about her is the facial expression, honestly. It's like a mix of a tease with sexy, but still, you know, like a little reserved. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Who is it? Again, now she's smiling. Now she's smiling. She knows that she's advancing in the competition. Oh. Life after the pandemic has given us a second chance. What do you do now and why? I stand before you here today receiving my second chance. 
Estoy delante de ustedes recibiendo mi segunda eh, chance. The pandemic rendered me jobless and hopeless, but through faith and perseverance, I rose again. La pandemia me ha dejado sin trabajo, sin recursos, pero con la buena fe de Dios estoy aquí fuerte. But I realized that many Filipinos, countless Filipinos, did not have the same opportunity as I did. He realizado que muchos Filipinos, bastante, no he tenido la oportunidad como yo. Throughout the pandemic, I had the privilege of volunteering, raising funds, and serving the less fortunate in my country. La pandemia me ha, ha dado la oportunidad de trabajar con personas con bajos recursos, organizaciones finas sin lucros. I witnessed their situation, and I realized that I will never be the same. Y he visto esas cosas y jamás voy a ser igual. And now, because of the pandemic, I choose to see people through the lens of empathy, to give them kindness, and to act in genuine selfless love. Y ahora, porque la pandemia, estoy viendo a las personas con una diferente vista, con más amor y con más empatía. And to live a life that serves a purpose that is bigger than myself and is in service of my fellow man. Y finalmente me ha dado propósito para mi, para mi vida, para servirle a aquellos que son más necesitados. Okay, so you guys, I told you earlier that I had to rant a little bit during this video and this is precisely why. So I'm gonna give this Q&A a critique in two parts, in two segments. So let's start by focusing on Emmanuel and the way that she answered the question and which I think honestly it was so, so well done not only the things that she included within her answer but also the elements that she decided to address you know talking about other filipinos the struggles that she went herself during the pandemic and how she had to face those challenges to make it where she is as of right now i am also quite happy with the question that she was giving because it's the type of question that allows you to talk about not only yourself but also talk about people and it's one of those that allows you to make a statement. That's what I'm trying to say. Going back to Emmanuel, I feel like she did an amazing job. I have nothing but to say or criticize. Now, the major, major, major problem that I have with this is the translation. And this is coming from a Latino myself, someone who speaks Spanish as my native language. No hate to Miss Dominican Republic. I mean, I do appreciate the intention of translating. I do appreciate the effort, you know, being there for your sister when she needed you to translate. However, the translation was not accurate at all. What Emmanuel was saying was, I don't know, from one to 10, I will rate it 10. What, Domi what Miss Dominican Republic was translating was a six. And we all know that Q&A is one of the most important parts of a pageant. Once you make it to that point, we already know that you have the beauty, that you have the technique, that you have the talent. Now the judges want to see if you can speak, if you have the brain, if you are smart. I'm really trying to be careful with the choice of words that I use here, but when you have such a beautiful answer. I mean, you guys can understand Emmanuel's answer, the way that she said it in English. But for those of you who don't understand the Spanish translation, it just did not live up to the expectation. And I don't know how to explain it other than the importance of vocabulary, you know, the choice of words. Sometimes Emmanuel will choose a word that is very heavy. I don't know, like, um, my fellow man, like my fellow countrymen, which is the equivalent of like my Copabayan. Miss Dominican Republic will translate something as like all the people or everyone out there, which is not the same. When you're talking about my Copabayan, when you're talking about my fellow countrymen, you are not talking about everyone out there. So I feel like in the translation, she really lost the essence of the message. And now I don't know if personally, this is something that hurt her during the competition, I mean, being a third runner-up, it is still an outstanding position. So by no means I'm throwing shade at, you know, Miss Dominican Republic or Emmanuel or anything like that. But I do believe that if the organization, if uh, Reina Hispanoamericana took the time to hire a translator, someone, an expert, and not just ask another 
beauty queen to translate, this could have been a different outcome for many reasons. And the first one is that if you're going to invite candidates from other countries that do not speak Spanish as their first language, you have to make sure that you are providing the resources and the tools necessary for those candidates to be on the same level as everyone, to have the same chance, the same opportunity. And once again, I'm not putting any negative intentions as on Miss Dominican Republic, but at the same time, you have to think that sometimes there might be a conflict of interest. These two women are competing for the same title. So how are you gonna ask one of them to translate for the other? It is for me a matter of logic and a matter of, you know, just giving equal chances to everyone. I feel like this was a setup for Emmanuel, if anything. I'm just like going through my emotions when it comes to it. <laughs> but trying to stay positive about it because i am happy with emmanuel's performance i am happy with the outcome of the competition and you know i don't want to let this negative thing take over the entire experience for me ultimately i feel like emmanuel did an amazing job she made filipinos proud she made you know her international supporters proud as well hence myself included i'm making this video about her if anything i would really really like to commend her for putting so much effort there's two things that emmanuel uh, had going on and the first one is that she had so little time to prepare for this pageant it was a matter of days, guys. Between the moment that she was crowned at Miss World Philippines to the moment that she took the plane to go to Bolivia, it was like 10 days-ish. On top of that, you have to add the language barrier. Imagine yourself in a competition in a foreign country where you do not understand the language, where you do not, where you cannot just communicate freely with everyone. It must have been completely challenging. And I remember during my send-off interview with Emmanuel that I asked her, how's your Spanish? You know, how are you preparing? And the way that she answered, it was very polite, but I felt like she was not confident enough just yet in her Spanish skills. And having said that, during her competition, I was tagging her on stuff on her social media. I was putting up my stories and she would always reply in Spanish. And for me, that was a sign of how much she was trying, you know, to, um, to be part of it, to be part of the pageant, to be part of the batch of girls, which is honestly the best attitude to have. She knows I speak English. She could have easily replied to me in English, but no, every single time Emmanuel went the extra mile and she replied in Spanish. So that's my two cents about the Q&A. I am more than happy, so proud about Emmanuel's answer. I am extremely, extremely upset at the translation that she was given. This is not it. This is not it. And you lost half of the impact just with that translation. You know what, let's keep watching. There's still like a few seconds left to this video. I don't know, I guess it's the coronation. So let's watch that and then we'll close the video with the final comments. Okay, so all I'm gonna say is that I am super happy for Emmanuel. I am super proud of her for everything that she did during Reina Hispanoamericana, but at the same time for the Miss World Philippines competition. I personally am one of those who believed, I personally was one of those who believed she deserved a higher crown during Miss World Philippines. However, she did make lemonade out of the lemons that she was given because her performance during Reina Hispanoamericana was, you know, very consistent and she made everyone proud. If anything, what I really want out of this video is to know your opinion. How do you guys feel about what I told you, especially for the Q&A part and the conversation about, you know, having a professional translator uh, that makes sure that the words that are chosen to translate are accurate and have the same level of impact that the answer that the contestant is providing. While you're in the comment section as well, don't forget to leave a like on this video, please, so that it gets recommended to more people. Subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one almost every single day. And last but not least, come here and give me a hug, because you know that's a little tradition on this channel. You know that I love you, that I appreciate you. Thank you for coming and spending a few moments out of a day here with me. And until I see you next time, everyone, please stay safe, be kind to one another, sending you all my love, all my kisses. And I'll see you on the next one.